everyone how's it going and welcome to today's wild rift video in today's guide we're going to be taking a look at the righteous kale kale is one of the strongest late game champions in the game her passive allows her to evolve dealing huge aoe damage with her auto attacks however this does come at a cost before kale reaches level 5 she is only a melee champion that struggles early on this is where you need to play safe and scale so she can solo carry and win every game. Take a look at the build with Kale as an AP carry. She wants to focus a lot on ability power items. However, you do want to mix and match in some items that give you attack speed and also a little bit of on hit damage since our passive gives us AOE damage on our auto attacks. Most of the time for the boots upgrade, I do really like boots of mana, especially because of the mana regeneration. This will help us a lot in the early game. Use our abilities to farm in the lane. However, you can go for something like Berserker Greaves if you feel like you benefit a lot more from the attack speed. However, you are going to get attack damage, which is not going to scale as well as ability power as the game goes on. Nash's Tooth, as I mentioned, a great item that gives you a mixture of both ability power and also a lot of attack speed. 45% attack speed is absolutely huge. You get the ability haste, you get the 60 ability power, and you also have the Nord passive, which when it, whenever you basic attack uh, hits an enemy champion, it will then cause it to do more on hit damage. Now, Kayla already has on hit damage thanks to her third ability. This will just give her even more on hit damage, which also scales with ability power. So that is a great way in which Kayle can do a lot of auto attack damage. Then we could just go for items like general AP items like Rift Maker. Really incredible for Kayle. The Omni Vamp will help Kayle a lot out, and especially in the mid and the late game because of all the extra healing that she's able to get. You got a bit of maximum health, ability power, magic penetration, and also ability haste. And avoid corruption passive whenever you're in combat you gain one stack of corruption up to three stacks and when you go up to three stacks the corruption turns into true damage so as long as you're in combat for three seconds which by the point that you get rift maker you're probably going to have a passive evolve twice so you're able to auto attack from range so being in combat is not really that big of a deal um, it's kind of easy to be in combat as a range champion you auto attack you gain a lot of true damage and also you gain the omni vamp as well so overall a great item for kale death camp for the extra ability power as the game goes on the percentage ability power inc increase is great and also the flat 100 ability power is also great you have to remember the ability power also helps with her abilities so her first ability gets increased uh second ability healing also gets increased and also the movement speed and also a third ability so ability power really helps her a lot crown of shatter queen is more of a defensive item but it's still an item that gives you a whole bunch of great stats ability power again maximum uh, magic penetration again a little bit of maximum mana to help you ever so slightly and also the ability haste but a big reason why we go for crown of shatter queen is because of the safeguard passive it grants us a spell shield that blocks the next hostile ability so if we're against a champion like thresh or nautilus that's trying to hook us or any champion with any crowd control blocking the next hostile ability is going to be huge for kale since she is very very squishy and she's going to have little to no health throughout most of the game she is going to be one of the main main potential carry uh main potential carry options for your team so you're going to get focused a lot by enemy champion so building item like crown of shatter queen will just help protect yourself and keep yourself alive and for the final item you can go for lich bane this item can be flexed around you can build moralinomicon if you're against a lot of healing or even trident if you're against a lot of shielding both of them items are also very good but i love lich bane because of the spell blade passive your third ability works as an auto attack reset and will also work as an auto attack so using your third ability will instantly proc spell blade allowing us to deal bonus magic Magic damage from our auto attack so overall an incredibly great item for kale for the runes you might be very surprised to see kraken slayer but kraken slayer actually works incredibly well with kale once she reaches level five and you have range form most of the time you're actually going to win the 1v1s when you hit level five because your range form plus kraken slayer plus the on hit damage from your third ability and also your ultimate being able to come invulnerable this gives kale a lot of power as soon as you hit level five and using this to your advantage could be very handy so kraken slayer is there just to give us more on hit damage again our third ability is an auto attack reset so all you need to do 
is auto attack use your third ability and then auto attack again and then you're able to deal the true damage from kraken slayer so overall a great rune to run on kale brutal this could be swapped out for gathering storm again brutal just gives us more auto attack damage which is great for kale because she basically always auto attacks or you go for something like gathering storm if you feel like you want the extra ability power a little bit later on into the game giant slayer really good in this meta at the moment with a lot of tanks but you can go for something like coup de gras if you're not against a lot of tanks at all legend bloodline for the extra healing and the extra omni vamp and then for the secondary room bone plating is also great just again block us and protect us from any damage that might come our way then the summer spells we have flash and exhaust and the reason why we go for exhaust is since kale is a great late game scaling champion her early game is gonna be a bit weak so if you do get caught out you can use your exhaust slow down the enemy champions reduce the incoming damage from them which means you're able to potentially escape away to safety but also helps you when you reach level five as well you can go in use your exhaust and try and win the 1v1 but that's everything with the build for kale let's head on to the abilities Let's start with Kale's abilities. Let's take a look at her passive, Divine Ascend. And this is one of the main reasons why Kale is such a late game machine. So Kale ascends as she gains level. So when you gain levels, so level 1, level 5, level 10, and level 15, she is able to evolve. Now, early on at level 1, you are going to be a melee champion and you are going to be fairly weak. You can see that your attacks though do grant attack speed for a few seconds and this can stack up to five times gaining movement speed at maximum stacks which as you can see if you walk up an auto attack you see you are a melee champion you are fairly weak but the little buzz underneath your mana bar will show you how many stacks you have of your passive and there you go when you reach maximum stacks this is where you get the extra bit of movement speed and every single time you auto attack when this yellow bar is going down will also reset the passive so you can get the extra movement speed and also the extra attack speed now once you reach level five this is really where kale can become a champion increasing her attack range to 525 so if i just level up a few times here to level five you also have to make sure that you actually use your abilities as well or level up your abilities but as you can see now i'm a range champion i still have the same passes from before which is always what you're going to get every single time so you can see here when i auto attack three times i still have the first part of the passive from level one which is going to give me movement speed and also a bit of attack speed but now i'm range meaning i'm a lot stronger than what i was before then at level 10, attacks fire a wave of flame at maximum stacks, dealing the passive damage from Starfire Spellblade. So the extra auto attack damage that you get from Starfire Spellblade, this can now work with your auto attacks. But this only works when you have maximum stacks. So again, if I go to level 10, if I auto attack a few times, it's going to be the same as normal. But when I'm at maximum stacks, like you can see, every single auto attack is going to deal a wave, dealing a lot of damage to not only the target you're auto attacking, but also the enemies behind as well. You can see here, if I hit this target dummy, you can see that it does AOE damage to targets behind. So you can hit this on multiple enemy champions during a fight. But then when you reach, reach level 15, this is where Kale can carry every single game. Attacks now have an increased range of 575 instead of 525. And the bonus that you get from level 10 with these extra flames will now become permanent. So every single auto attack will deal that huge massive AoE damage. You see here, level 15, if I go all the way up to level 15 here, you'll be able to see that every single one of my auto attacks, doesn't matter how many stacks I have, every single auto attack is going to deal these extra flames. And this is basically the point of the game that you want to reach with Kale. Basically, up until you're level 15, you're not really a great champion at all. You have a bit of a spike at level 5, but then you just want to farm up and play as safe as possible until you reach level 15, until you reach your maximum power spike with your passive. This is where she can solo carry and do huge AoE damage. Kale's first ability is Radiant Blast. Kale launches a Celestial Sword dealing magic damage. Enemies here are slowed by 50% and their armor and magic resist is reduced by 15% but for four seconds this most of the time only works on one target sometimes this can work on other targets but this will stop 
by the time the uh, first enemy is hit. So if I'm using this first ability, if I'm trying to hit the target dummy behind here, it will just work, but it does stop. The ability does stop on the first target that you hit. So if I'm over here, if I'm using this target dummy as an example, if I want to then try and hit the enemy behind, I'm too far away. Is that you're going to, oh, that still hits. I mean, maybe it does have a longer range of what I thought. But there is a way that you can, it could just be blocked basically by the first enemy champion. And then it can't go any further. So say like minions, for example, will block this or anything like that. So you do need to be careful. It doesn't have the longest amount of range, but it's really important to make sure that you use your first ability on an enemy champion before you use your auto attacks, before you use your other abilities. Because that reduction of armor and magic resist on enemy champions means that your auto attacks and your abilities are going to be able to do a lot more damage. And also you'll be able to slow them as well after using the ability. Okay, well, second ability, we have Celestial Blessing. Kale heals herself and an allied champion for a certain amount and grants them both movement speed for two seconds. Now, this movement speed can go up to a whopping 40%, which is a lot of movement speed for Kale and also an ally. You can use this on someone like Nautilus or Thresh. I don't know why I keep using it as an example, but they're just great examples. Use them as kind of your engage tool. They can go in, they can engage if you give them extra movement speed. You do have to be careful though, when you tap this ability, it will basically just heal the lowest enemy around you, which sometimes you don't really want to heal the lowest enemy around you. Sometimes you want to target a certain ally champion. And if you do want to target a certain ally champion, you need to make sure that you use this ability manually. You can see here that I can target any one of these ally dummies, but it doesn't matter which one I target, I will still heal myself for the same amount even if I tap the ability or even if I use this on one of these dummies. So you can see here, if I use this, it's going to heal me and also the allied target dummy. If I then press the heal, you can see that it's just going to use basically the closest one to me every single time, but it's still going to heal me and the allied champion for the same amount. So it's a lot better with our second ability to manually aim this ability to an allied champion that you want to give the movement speed and the healing towards but the big thing is not really the healing it's the extra movement speed because when you get more ability power as the game goes on this ability is going to scale and you can see that the movement speed scales with ability power so the more ability power you build the more movement speed you're going to get which is going to be incredible as the game goes on Okay, well, third ability, we have Starfire Spellblade. We know about the passive already. Attack still bonus magic damage, which also scale with bonus attack damage and ability power. We know this because we can get this on our passive when we level up as the game goes on. But this also has an active. So the active empowers her next attack to become range and deal bonus magic damage to the depending on the target's missing health and when kale reaches level 10 starfire uh, starfire spell blade affects all nearby enemies so again as the game goes on this ability again becomes stronger especially once you reach level 10 but as it says during the early game this can work as a ranged attack when you're melee early on so that's why you always want to make sure that you use this ability to farm minions when you're at range you'll see that a little bit later on in the gameplay but one of the big things with this ability is it does work as an auto attack reset so what you're able to do is auto attack third ability and then auto attack again and that will be your quick proc of kraken slayer so it'll be really really easy so you do auto attack third ability into auto attack you can see that because if you just auto attack normally the auto attacks are a bit slow but use a third ability in between and it's going to be incredibly powerful because it reduces the time that you use both of your auto attacks and you can see when you activate the ability it does huge aoe damage as well this is obviously past level 10 which means it's going to do huge aoe damage but even in the early game it still could be really good you know even if I just reset my level here, and if I use my third ability early on, it's still going to do a lot. You know, you're still going to do a lot of damage early on. Again, this is mainly going to be used to farm minions. But when you level up and when you get to level 10, then you'll be able to use this ability and do that huge, massive AoE damage. You can see here that big, massive splash damage, which affects everyone around that target. And lastly, we have Kale's ultimate, which is Divine Judgment. Grants invulnerability to an ally champion, 2.5 seconds and then after a small period of time the blades rain down around the target dealing magic damage now this does says 
This does say grants invulnerability to an ally champion, but that ally champion could also be yourself. So you could decide whether you want to be more of a solo carry yourself, and if you want to use your ultimate on yourself to keep yourself alive, or you can use this on any ally champion. So I can use this here on this ally target dummy if I want to, or pretty much any ally target dummy. But as I mentioned, I can use this and cast this on myself. I just tap the ability it costs on myself and you can see the big massive blade of arrows you're able to do like huge massive aoe damage like this you can see there a lot of aoe damage that you're able to do with your ultimate but a big thing with your ultimate that i want you to take away is that you're not able to use any other abilities or auto attacks when channeling your ultimate and this also counts when your ultimate use when you use your ultimate on an ally champion say for example these enemy champions are attacking one of my allies i want to use this ultimate on an allies and i want to also walk up an auto attack if i'm auto attacking and then if i ultimate this target dummy you can see that i can't auto attack i have to wait until my ultimate is finished and then i can auto attack again so you have to bear this in mind you have to be extremely careful when using your ultimate unless you use your ultimate on yourself where you become invulnerable so you don't have to worry too much but if you use this on an ally champion you become completely exposed for a few seconds meaning that enemies can auto attack you use abilities on you and you won't be able to counteract you won't be able to deal damage back to them because you're channeling your ultimate most of the time i would say just use this on yourself because you are the main carry of your team especially with ko as the game goes on but again sometimes you might want to use this on your allied champions just trying to keep them alive especially junglers for example to try and keep them alive during objectives but most of the time i'm a little bit selfish i like to use the ultimate on myself because i know i'm the real carry Now, in terms of combos for Kale, there's not really any combos at all. There's only really one combo that I want you to bear in mind. And it's kind of evaluating the situation of your first ability and also your third ability. And as I mentioned already, you want to use your first ability before you do anything else in a fight. And your third ability also works as an auto attack reset. So what I want you to do in terms of a combo, whenever you go into a 1v1 or a team fight, use your first ability, auto attack, third ability, and then auto attack. Really quick and simple combo for you to use. First ability, auto, third ability, auto. That's as quick and as easy as a combo gets for Kale. You got your first ability activating at the start, which means that you're reducing the movement speed and also reducing the magic resist of enemy champions. You auto attack, you auto attack reset with your third ability and then you auto attack again and after that you can mix in other abilities you can mix in your third ability again you can mix in your second ability to get a bit of extra movement speed and then also your ultimate but most of the time kale just uses her auto attacks as her damage output that's why we go for items like nash's tooth and items like that because most of our damage is coming from our auto attacks not our abilities but i want to show you this combo anyway because this is like a basic combo that everyone needs to know And for the leveling order for Kale, you always want to go for your third ability at level one. As I mentioned, this allows you to become ranged for a short amount of time when using this ability. So it's really good during the early game where you don't want to walk up towards enemy champions. Kale will always lose every single fight at level one. Doesn't really matter who you're against, she's always going to lose every single fight. So in the early game, before you reach level five, you always just want to make sure you farm up as much as possible. That's why we go for our second ability at level two as well. So this gives us two instances to be able to farm minions at range. Then obviously go for our third ability when available. But the biggest ability we want to max is our first third ability. Our third ability is going to able is going to allow us to do the most amount of damage. It's an auto attack reset and also it has a very low cooldown. So make sure you do that is really, really important. Then at level five, also you become a range champion when you get your ultimate so you can be a little bit more aggressive you still want to max your third ability then after that you want to max your first ability again your first ability is going to do a lot you can see in the stats here you gain less cooldown the cost goes up which doesn't really mean too much but the base damage goes up by a lot and also that slow amount goes from 26 up to 50 percent so you get a lot of bonus here by leveling up your first ability and then level up your second ability when you have the chance to right at the end of the game and then level up your ultimate when available and then once you reach level 15 you have all your ultimates and everything online your all your abilities are maxed out your passive is also maxed out you can pretty much run around and solo carry every single game 
that's everything for this section of the video in terms of the kale rundown i'm going to show you all a gameplay now of kale kind of show you how kale can be weak during the early game but once you reach level 15 she could become an absolute beast so enjoy the gameplay and i'll see you in just a second all right on to the gameplay we go with kale i am playing kale in the mid lane you'll be very surprised to know that kale can actually work in the jungle in wild rift you kind of like negate that weak early game that you might have with kale yes your ganks are not really that good but you're able to just safely farm throughout the game and get to you know level 5 level 10 or maybe even level 15 very very safely i still think her best lane is probably the mid lane since you don't really come under too much threat by many mid lane champions Baron lane is probably her weakest i would say out of the three because there are a lot of champions that can use kale's early game and take that to their advantage like champions like renekton yone for example if you walk up a little bit too far they can dash forward and deal a lot of damage to you the kale jungle can still work you know that jungle clear speed is not great but again it kind of you know deletes the purpose of this early game for kale as you can see this is all you want to do with kale in the early game i mean playing kale early game is probably one of those most boring things in wild rift like one of the most boring things because there is nothing you could do with ko in the early game until you reach level five um i have to say though that this game is not like a complete stomp this game is a little bit difficult i think this game really shows that if you do make a mistake with ko then you are going to get punished extremely hard and very very quickly um you can see at the moment i'm not doing too bad i'm dodging re skill shots i'm trying to use my abilities to be able to farm minions you can see here trying to walk up and auto attack where i can so i don't use my mana that's why i like going for the um the uh boots of mana to be able to like just use my our abilities more often helps us a lot especially during the early game unfortunately i lost the uh, cannon minion there which kind of sucks a little bit to lose the cannon minion but it's okay like i said th there's not really much i can do here it's it's so difficult if i get if i get ori charmed once i'm probably going down to like one hp <laughs> that that's the honest truth of how this matchup works so you can see that against ori all i'm doing is standing behind the minions as long as i stand behind the minions then she's not able to charm me obviously unless she gets you know level uh level uh level five you can see here that when i get level five i do start to play a little bit more aggressive i did have a little bit of an advantage there i honestly think i could have killed her here i think if i played more aggressive and maybe flash forward auto attack one more time i think i probably could have killed ari here but you can see how once you hit level five this is kind of where the spike comes in for kale this is kind of where like oh you know i can actually do a lot of damage i'm actually a champion that can do extremely well um and yeah like i said before level five you basically have to do what i did and just basically just stay F afk pretty much the whole game uh, but yeah, going for Boots of Mana into Nash's Tooth is kind of a no-brainer, really, for Kale. Um, she doesn't really have too many other options in terms of items that she can build. Um, just getting auto-attack damage is really important for Kale. Um, the thing is, is like when you hit when you hit level five with Kale, that's kind of the only chance that you have to try and get that advantage. Like as soon as you hit level five before the enemy champion goes back to base. Now it still becomes a little bit difficult. I still don't think that I'm able to kill this ari i don't feel confident at all because again if i get charmed i can't use any of my abilities so i get really chunked down before i even use my ultimate so i kind of have to wait until ari uses her charm and then i can look to engage you can see here that i'm you know playing a little bit aggressive i'm trying to get, take some trades towards ari but it's not really doing too much i think ari played this matchup really really well because she didn't waste her charm if ari just wastes her charm here I can just walk up and do so much damage to her, but she didn't waste her charm pretty much, you can see, this whole time. So I'm so worried about walking up and trying to do, you know, any damage at all. I don't really care about her first ability or her second ability. I can probably out damage her. But that charm is like the big threat for me. It's like the big reason why, you know, KO is so scary to play sometimes because your your damage is just not there during the early game. You know, you kind of have to wait until you're level five, level 10, or maybe even level 15. You see that I haven't done too bad on me, except for that scenario where I actually took a lot of chunk damage there from uh, from Ari. Making sure the minions don't die to the tower and I lose another cannon minion. Um, yeah, I'm nearly level 8, so I'm not doing too bad. You can see it doesn't take too long for KO to level up. The big, the big um, 
I guess, I guess in terms of the big spike and how long it takes to level is when you reach level 10. When you reach level 10, it's really difficult to try and get to level 15, you know, very, very quickly. Uh, I'm just going to go back to base here. I'm just going to go back, go back to base. Again, the laning phase is a little bit boring. You know, there's not really much that you can do with KO during the early game. And to be honest, this is how every single game is going to go with KO. If you try and walk up and if you try and trade aggressively and you get caught by ganks or by anything else, you're just dead like i'm just totally honest with you this is why a lot of players don't perform very well with ko and this is also why a lot of players don't really like seeing ko on their team because most of the time they just don't understand the limits with ko they don't understand how to play ko or when to go in and when not to go in with ko this is what i kind of want to teach you with this video and just every single video in general when i'm talking about uh champion guides yeah basically you can see here that i'm just like farming i'm just doing whatever i want i don't really need to do too much again i take a big massive trade here i make a pretty big mistake here though well i say a big mistake i don't think it was even that bad i slow the nautilus i try and keep the via life here which i actually block a lot of the damage but i kind of stay here and i stay i stay a little bit too far forwards i probably what i should do there is ultimate the vi and then look to just try and back away and not auto attack. I thought that maybe Vi could go back in. Maybe we can do a bit more damage. But I would say overall that's my mistake. I think I did the right thing ulti and Vi to keep her alive. But then afterwards I should just back off. I shouldn't try and auto attack. I shouldn't try and step in range to be able to use her other abilities or anything like that. that that's just my fault. You know, Ari still had to charge her ultimate. I did see her use her ultimate in the river. But she still had another charge. So little bit of an unfortunate situation there to be in again we tried to keep our team alive which i don't think was a bad call even though i'd say that most of the time you want to ultimate yourself it's not always like that when you're really really low uh really really high on hp normally you feel like you're not under too much of a threat but then yone comes you know ari comes over the wall nautilus is just using our damage as well so yeah a bit unfortunate but vi did use the rift herald mid lane and we are going to take the first tower here in the mid lane so it's a lot of gold a lot of xp to us which is really, really nice. You can see that we're nearly at level 10. I think level 10 is really when you can look to start a team fight with Kale. I think beforehand, you don't really want to. But I think once you reach level 10, this is where Kale can be really, really strong. But every single time you have the opportunity with Kale, I would always look at trying to farm jungle camps. I wouldn't really worry about the jungler too much. I mean, unless the jungler is right there, you don't want to completely steal it away from the jungler. Just every single time you have, have the opportunity try and farm jungle camps try and walk to the raptors walk to uh you know golems or anything like that and try and you know use it where you can just get as much gold and as much xp as possible you can see now i'm level 10 i'm gonna level up my ability and then once i reach level 10 i'm gonna do really well i do make a mistake here though you can see like how quickly i can get bursted if i'm not careful of the minions i didn't realize how quickly my minions died there i was standing behind the minions just to play safe and i just died in an instant this is the thing like i've been farming the whole game i've been playing pretty well the entire game but one little mistake with kale and you're just one shot you're dead and now the ari's in a really really strong spot she already got a kill with me in the mid lane before now she got an extra pick on me there as well again it's again it's my fault of course so, you know i shouldn't be in a position where uh ari could ulti on me like that and use the charm but you can see that when i don't have my ultimate then i'm just going to be in big trouble um so yeah it, it, again it's a little, it's a bit of a difficult position to be in but that's 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 the position you're in when you pick kale that's why a lot of people don't really pick kale i'm trying to look for a roam bot lane here though um i think it's a pretty good roam because ari is pretty low on health and i'm trying my best here to walk up to the thresh and maybe trying to save him but not able to just yet you see i try and use my first ability but i completely failed it because i'm an absolute noob um i'm able to do enough damage here i actually flash forward here use my ultimate underneath the tower turning vulnerable and then get double kill i think that was worth it i do die for it but we do get the shutdown onto ari which i think was the main thing i use my ultimate for my advantage just flashing underneath the tower making sure that i get the tower i grow this is that's hilarious by the way the vibe moved vi moved out of the way and then Jin got hit by the caitlin ult but that's that's pretty funny to me um but yeah we got the shutdown on the ari we got the other kill as well we got the tower in the bot lane so overall i would say that's a win for us we trade our life for it but that's a win for us so level 13 we need to try and get to level 15 as soon as possible again as you can see here what i'm doing is i'm just going to farm up the jungle camps here because i know the vi is not looking to go towards here you know she was walking towards bot side so when the lane is not pushed underneath tower or not even close to tower 
you can see that i'm just going towards the jungle camps just farming up as much as possible my goal right now is to get to level 15 i know once i hit level 15 i can carry this game i can solo carry this game it's extremely close at the moment like this matchup and this game is just extremely close in general you can see how i'm doing like basically no damage here to um to alistar again i play again i shouldn't really i thought i had my ultimate in this situation um i should have realized that i didn't have my ultimate and also i should have realized that my team was going down to dragon so yeah my mistake there unfortunately i thought that i would have been okay with just standing there and auto attacking alistar and then yone and ari just pops out of nowhere and then you're just kind of stuck again i didn't have my ultimate if i had my ultimate i would have used that a lot sooner but i think i was like two or three seconds away from using my ultimate before ari charmed me so really unfortunate timing for the engage there again I kind of got a little bit debated, but I do have Crown of Shadow Queen now. So if Yone tries to jump on me, Nautilus, Alistar, Ari, you know, they have a lot of crowd control. So I kind of adapted my build and I said to myself, okay, I need the shield from Crown of Shadow Queen. I'm not really too bothered at the moment about my damage, you know, because my main goal is just to play safe, don't die, and then try and farm up until I can get to level 15, which we're pretty close to level 12 right now. So we're only three levels away. But you can see that that leveling from level one to level 10 is quite quick. But once you reach level 10, it does take quite some time to get to level 15, um, which is a little bit difficult. You can see here that, yeah, again, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit caught. I'm walking through the river here, but I do get saved here by the Thresh Lantern. Again, I probably should have died there. I don't know why I'm walking through the river. I should just be walking through my own jungle. I shouldn't be walking through the river at all. You can see how I'm just playing back and I'm playing a little bit passive here, making sure that I just auto tap the champions that are right in front of me. That's the big thing. I see the Caitlyn extremely low on health. I flash forward, get the kill on her. We do get a few kills there. I do get caught by the Ari, but I think overall this is a pretty, you know, big win in terms of a trade. Three for two trades. Again, we do trade our life for it, but I don't think it's too bad. I think this is a little bit too much though from Ari, uh, from Vi. I'm not too sure what Vi is thinking here. I mean, it was a win trade, but until that happens. So I used the flash over the wall and I used the AOE damage from my third ability to kill the Caitlyn and also deal damage to everyone else. I just got caught on the Ari Q. I didn't get caught by the Ari Q there. I would have been fine. A little bit unfortunate there, but again, we trade our life, but I think it's fine. I mean, we're one, five and four. Like I said, this is not like a crazy carry game. This is more of a game where you can understand me where it comes to you know kale how weak she can be um and what you need to do with kale to be able to win games because like i said as you see a little bit later on you can see our potential later on you can see here i'm just farming through jungle camps farming through wards clearing wards clearing scuttle crabs just doing anything i can in my powers right now to give as much gold to me as possible and as much xp to me as possible as well Blue buff's coming up soon. We could probably catch off the Alistar here because the Alistar is all by himself. He's going to take a bit of time to die. We do need to be a little bit careful with everyone else jumping in. But you can see how long it actually takes us to kill uh, to kill him there. Viego, we dodged the Viego ulti. Actually, no, I didn't dodge the Viego ulti. That was actually our Crown of Shattered Queen coming in play. And that's why we went for Crown of Shattered Queen instead of going for Rift Maker second item. If I went for Rift Maker, I probably would have died there, to be honest. But we went for Crown of Shattered Queen for that moment for the moment where yone might jump in or someone might jump in and hit us with like huge massive crowd control but that was a big thing they try to get bot lane tower i actually don't know if they get bot lane tower here they do get the bot lane tower but we know we can just chase them down at this point we can just chase them down and try and trade try and trade one kill back again i missed my first your first ability is quite hard to hit by the way with uh nautilus like the with kale sorry like the first ability is sometimes really difficult to hit because the range is not really that big Need level 13 eventually. Again, Vi is playing a little bit too over aggressive. Um, I'm not too sure if I should really help this Vi. I don't think it's worth it, to be honest with you, because the Vi is just kind of dead already. Yeah, the Vi is dead. And now Jin's dead. And yeah, we just played way too over aggressive here. There was no reason for us to chase the Caitlyn when she had Guardian Angel as well. I don't actually know it was the Vi that had Guardian Angel, but still, like, the Vi should never have chased there into uh into the enemy jungle because we know that they were all coming back alive anyway because of that play that we made top lane Renekton next it does get the top lane tower though you can see on the mini map on the top left hand corner okay uh Renekton getting the top lane tower is pretty big so it's one in hip to one at the moment and 
this is the thing with KO, right? If the game is completely even and you're in a state like this in a game where the game is even, no one's really ahead of the game. No one's really running away with the game. And it's even. It's like kind of 50-50 at the moment. This is where KO becomes really powerful. KO becomes really, really strong at this point. Because with KO, you're just scaling. You're getting more farm. You're getting more gold. You're scaling. You know, you want the games to go on quite long. You want to make sure that you get to a point in the game where you can be a carry. And that's the big thing. I do use my ultimate here on the uh, Dragon Pit of Stealth. We do still away the dragon as well, which is absolutely huge for us. Trying to do a little bit more damage, but we don't really need to. And yeah, we still away the dragon. That's the main purpose that we wanted here. Again, a huge wave in the spot lane, which is going to give us even more XP. Unfortunately, the XP is shared because Vi and Jin was also nearby. But we're three quarters of the way of level 15. Kale is like a ticking time bomb. When Kale reaches level 15, it's so difficult to win. Like, honestly, KO is like a ticking time bomb for the enemy team. If they don't finish this game soon, they are probably going to lose this game. You can see here, like, a lost tick of ignite. Oh my god. I was so close to dying, but the last tick of ignite didn't go off. Well, I did go off, but I was able to heal in time. Absolutely huge. You can see here that I want to build Quicksilver again because they have so much crowd control. Quicksilver is so important for KO because, as I mentioned, one hit on the crowd control and you're just dead. You see here, I want to give the movement speed to the Thresh to try and help the Thresh out. I kind of wait until Thresh is low on XP. We bait him out with the ultimate. And there we go. We get the kill onto the Thresh there, which is absolutely huge. We're going to try and kill the Ari here as well, hopefully. But that's where you can use your um, your abilities to your advantage when you're doing it on, a, on an ally champion instead of yourself. Halfway now to level 15. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. And you can see that huge wave in bot lane again. Like, that wave in bot lane is so huge for us. We're going to get so much XP from this wave. Like, look at all this. I mean, unfortunately, Vi's here again. Like, if Vi wasn't here, we probably would have got level 15 here. We're so, so close. Like, I just want to clear one more wave here. That's all I want to do. If I clear this mid lane wave, I'm level 15. Vi is, for some reason, going bot lane when the Baron's up. Which is a little bit interesting. It's okay. There we go. Level 15. Our spike has come in. We're going to go back to base. We're going to buy Rift Maker. Again, I have no idea why Vi is bot lane when Baron is up. But yeah, that's fine now. We're at the point of the game where we're actually a champion. And now we can carry. And look at this. My Thresh stole Baron with Meteor. Thresh has Meteor and stole Baron with Meteor. And I was like, oh my god, that is absolutely insane. And I was like, okay, now we can try and look for a fight, maybe. Maybe we can do something. This is two versus five, by the way. Me and Thresh versus the world. And I use my QSS to stop it. I use my ultimate so that I don't take that much damage from Ari. We kill the Ari. The Caitlyn is straight afterwards as well. And then the Alistar is also dead, giving us a quadra kill in a four versus two. The Renekton already died. A Vi went in and died as well. Everyone else just went in and died. So it's me and Thresh versus the world. The Thresh steals the Baron, gives us the extra stats. We're level 15 as well, and we can just completely carry the game. And that's all it takes, just like that. A flick of the switch, just like that. You can 1v9 when you play KO and when you reach level 15, and then you're able to win the game. It's as simple as that. Well, it's about getting to that point, which is a bit of a difficult part. You know, level 5 to level 10, level 10 to level 15. That's a difficult part. When you reach level 15... Happy days. You're actually a, an insane carry. You're probably one of the best late game champions in the game when you reach level 15. I'd see our stats in the end as well. See how well we did in terms of our stats for this game. Eventually, when I go through it all, uh, I should be showing the stats quite soon. There we go. Show the stats. Get everything up. MVP performance in the end. So again, we kind of risked our early game. You know, we didn't do too well in the early game, but I think we made some decent trades. 38,000 damage in the end though which is the second most damage in the entire game only Ari did more damage than us but you can see how much of a carry we can be right at the end of that game level 15 four items we're just two people me and Thresh as long as I keep my distance and Thresh is in front of me I can be the role carry but hopefully you enjoyed this guide anyway hopefully you learned a thing or two about Kale and as always make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one video peace